Hello and welcome to this episode of Godot Tutor Blitz, where I try to teach you some Godot things as fast as possible. Um, today we're going to be looking at layers, masks, and collision detection. Let's go ahead and get on into it. We're going to start off with a rigid body 2D node. This is basically your Swiss Army knife of 2D physics bodies. As we see here, we have four modes under mode. We have rigid, static, character, and kinematic. A quick rundown of these modes. So rigid is basically your full-on physics body. It'll rotate, it'll move collisions, it'll run an integrate forces call every frame, very important. But the most important things is it's going to call your integrate forces, it's going to be able to have angular velocity as well as linear velocity. This is basically a free-flowing with the physics engine, but it's able to have angular velocity as well. The next thing is a static object. A static object basically is not affected by the physics engine by anything beyond just basic colliding. Um, no velocity transition, no energy, nothing. So once something is in a static body, it will not move. Um, you can move it with code via its position, but you're not going to have a linear velocity and you're not going to be able to apply impulses to it. The next setting, and the most important for platformers, is going to be character. The character setting is very similar to rigid setting, however, the big, big difference is you do not have angular velocity and your character will always be straight up and down. And while we're on that topic, let me go ahead and demonstrate. As we see here, when we're running, we do not fall down. However, do the exact same thing, but let's do it in rigid mode. Now, when we go to rigid mode, we don't even make it out of the thing. As you see, I'm just, I'm, I'm falling down and if we look at my collision shapes, we can see that I basically just stumble. So rotation, don't really want it for your platforming. I use it to do a spin effect. Typically, you're not gonna use that. All right, and then finally, kinematic. So kinematic is basically rigid, except it'll only move via code. Um, so what this means is that gravity needs to be applied manually via code, but it will call an integrate forces function every frame for you to move it via code. Static bodies will not call an integrate forces every frame. And moving on, a lot of these things are important to collision detection, so we're gonna skip over them and save those for a rigid body 2D tutorial. The next thing that is important, however, is gonna be continuous collision detection. Now, if we set this to disabled, it's best for performance. Now, if you set this to cast ray, the game will predict where your body is going based on how a laser beam, basically, or a light ray would reflect off of a mirror. If you're coming in at 45 degrees, it's gonna predict you bouncing off at 45 degrees and check ahead for collisions. Now, casting shape is a little bit different because shape actually casts the entire object. Say, an egg. You throw an egg and it's rotating. Using cast ray would treat that egg more just like a basketball in which once it bounces, it'll hit and come back off 45 versus the cast shape would actually take into consideration the shape of that egg. And then, you know, depending on its rotation, how it's rotating and such, that's going to affect where it goes and how its momentum gets influenced. But there are downsides. The downside is course performance with disabled being best for performance, ray being a little bit worse on performance and then shape being hardest on performance. So when you do use these, you want to use these only when you absolutely need to, specifically when objects move extremely fast. Next up is contacts reported and contact monitor. Now these are extremely, extremely, extremely important. If you forget to turn this on and you're using a collision based signal, it, it won't work. The contacts monitor allows the object to report what it's feeling around it effectively. Um, so you could access that information via code. The contacts reported are the most number of objects it's going to feel for every frame. Contacts reported for means that I can like touch the ground, I could touch a power up, I could be hit by an enemy bullet, and I could be hit by an enemy all at the same frame. Contacts reported for, which I have my character set for, is kind of a little bit overkill. So I'm actually going to bump that down to three. Now none of that matters if you have contact monitor turned off. The main reason you would turn this off or turn it off via code is again for performance reasons. Really annoying things are sleeping and can't sleep. These aren't really too much to do with collision detection because the collision will wake them up. However, if you're counting on your collision being processed via the integrate forces function, you want to watch out and avoid using these because when an object is sleeping, it will not call integrate forces. If your whole collision detection is based inside the integrate forces function, a sleeping object won't always detect the collision. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, and it's going to be a headache. Now on to the big thing that everybody, everybody has the big questions with is layer and mask. Now the best way to describe this is basically the layer is like 
the dimension that the object exists in, like um, like the plane of existence, while the mask is basically what existences the object is looking for. So two objects in the same layer will collide with each other. If one object exists in a layer that another scans, then a collision is detected by the scanning object and vice versa. So in this case, I have the player to exist as player and it scans for collision with the environment, with mobs, with mob bullets, environmental hazards, and with power-ups. So basically what this does is it gives me, like there's a clear layer if I only want to target the player, only the player's on it, so I can just click that. This basically allows you to set up things such as power-up items that, uh, like a health regeneration, that will go pass through an enemy, but won't pass through the ground, and yet still be detectable by the player to pick it up. And as we can see, this is accomplished in mine via setting the mask to environment. So now it's looking to see if it collides with the environment. And then I have an area 2D actually that is scanning for the player and it exists in the power-ups. So the player is able to scan it and detect its power-up and this power-up is able to detect the player. And that's a little bit overkill. Usually you want to figure out like one direction that you need to go and stick with it. Whether it's the object being received or the receiving object that is doing your collision detection. So there's a couple different shapes you can use while doing collision. You can use a raycast set to enable, and then you can set its own collision mask and its own collide with. Um, collide with is kind of like layers, um, just not really as, as fine tunable. Um, your collision mask though, anything that the ray exists in the collision mask, it'll be able to detect. What this will allow you to do is basically, I use it to create a single point that connects to the ground, so that way the friction values in my game, because my game is physics based, um, don't interfere too much with how the player moves. And also any little slight dips and downs I can like kind of roll over. Now if this is not enabled, the more common use word is to actually force a raycast update to check if it's colliding in a frame when needed. And that's what I use for the most part my raycast for in addition to a uh, aforementioned uh, usage. All right, so now finally, we have area 2Ds. So area 2Ds, nothing really too much different than what we've already discussed here in this tutorial. The main thing that's different as far as collision is concerned is going to be your monitoring and your monitorable. All right, now monitorable means other things can detect its existence. Monitoring means it can detect other things' existence. Now this is can be very important if you have multiple area 2Ds and you don't want them to detect each other, but you want them to be able to detect other things um, that are overlapping. It's, there's so many uses here, just very, very important. So it's kind of like another level to your layer and mask because it's effectively doing kind of the same thing, but expanding on that control that you have. That covers how collisions occur and what's gonna detect them. There's two primary ways to pick up on it and that's gonna be via signals. Um, which we can see that my area 2D here is casting a signal. Um, that signal I have connected to shield regen and it calls uh, my pickup item method from the object. So you can use signals which will only get called when that action occurs, such as this is uh, when the area 2D body gets entered. The more complex approach is integrate forces, in which case this frame, this gets called every frame for an object that's not a static object. And then you can handle it there. In my setup, I actually handle my collision detection over here and that's this function here. So S is the physics state. And this grabs the amount of contacts, like objects that the current body is contacting right now. Um, and then for each one of those, we're gonna go ahead and get their local normal, which is their like relative position um, normalized. So we know a direction that it came from. And then we also get the contact collider object, which is the most important thing for hit detection. And that way you have a way to reference whatever you just contacted. And in my case, once I get that, I use that to see if it's in the mob group. And if it is, then the player takes damage based on whatever damage setting that mob is in. And that's a good rundown of 2D collision detection in Godot. And that's it for this episode of Godot Blitz Tutorial. If you have any questions, if anything was unclear, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. If you did like this video, go ahead and smash your computer monitor. I mean, or click the like button, or do, do one of those. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It really, really helps. And um, until next time, peace.